Hello and welcome to another video from the only YouTube channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today's little video is going to be about the truth about Thanksgiving. Now, I'm not into holidays or any of that, but you need to know the truth if you're going to make wise decisions and you've got to make wise decisions if you're going to survive. So, this morning I wake up and of course today is Thanksgiving. And my wife insists on watching the networks, and every 15 minutes the networks come out with another fun Thanksgiving fact. So far I've endured three of them. All three were lies. All three were propaganda used to manipulate your mind so that when you're asked to do something insidiously evil, you will do it because you live in a country that celebrates Thanksgiving. And uh, it's just good to know the truth. And we're going to talk about that right now. First lie they told was that the very first Thanksgiving was held in 1621. It was attended by a, a Native American translator named Squanto, as well as an Indian chief named Massasoit and his peoples. This is all lies. Every bit of this is lies. First off, Squanto was not there. He was not really a translator for the Europeans to the native peoples. He was basically a man who had been kidnapped years earlier, brought to England, and sold into slavery. <clears throat> While he was there, he did learn English, and that's what saved him. He was able to escape his master one day, make his way down to the docks, and talk a ship's captain into bringing him back home. But he wasn't at, thanks, at, at this meal in 1621. There was a meal and it was supposed to be a celebration but it was very meager. It was everything that the Europeans had gathered together and these Europeans today are called pilgrims to make it seem like they were on a religious pilgrimage but they really weren't. They were just exploited, e exploitive evil Europeans there for one thing and that is to uh, get rich. They were called pilgrims years later to make them seem like nicer people than they really were. Massasoit was actually a scout who was sent to find out what these Europeans were about. He, he didn't have his people with him, he had other scouts, male warriors. And uh, when they got there and saw the Europeans celebrating, they decided to go out and kill some animals. So I think they brought five deer, they went and killed five bucks just within a very short amount of time and a bunch of turkeys and they brought those and presented them to the Europeans so that they could sit in with them and kind of feel them out. Now the main reason that Massasoit was so curious is it was two reasons. One, a man named the Peacemaker had come years earlier and told the native peoples that they needed to straighten their lives out, live right, because uh, Evil humans from across the ocean were going to come and decimate their land, destroy all of the trees, kill all the animals, and exterminate Massasoit's people. So they already had information from some kind of a prophet, maybe an angel. And on top of that, the Europeans had been robbing their graves. It was a custom for Massasoit's people to put corn in baskets and bury it with their dead. And the Europeans knew this, so they would go dig the graves up desecrate the graves and take the corn. Well, when this meal was over, they did not repeat it. In other words, the next year they didn't have another celebration with the Indians and they didn't have one the next year. In fact, they didn't even celebrate it with each other. Uh, they simply were celebrating the fact that they had survived a harsh winter or a year there and never even intended the native peoples to be there. They were glad to get the food from them, which by the way, there was a, a reason that Massasoit went out and, and killed five deer that day. He wanted to show those Europeans that they didn't have to rob graves for food, that the, the, the land simply provided food. It was free for the taking. All they had to do was learn the ways of the land. Um, and of course, it was the second purpose was to simply make himself uh, e easier to make it easier for him to get in amongst them and see what was going on. No, they didn't start a celebration officially. Uh, there's no note of any celebration until 1634. The Native American peoples were near about wiped out by a plague 
and the governor of Massachusetts at that time in 1634 declared it um, a holiday or a day of celebration because so many native peoples, what he called the uh, heathenous vermin who inhabited the land had been killed by God. And they were going to celebrate that. But even then, there was no mention of them celebrating the same thing every year. That didn't happen until 1637. In 1637, a group of Europeans surrounded a village and killed 700 native peoples in a, what's called, this is, let's see this, you can look it up, the Peacock Massacre. Hope you can see that. P-E-Q-U-O-T Massacre, 1637. Uh, they did horrible, horrible things to these people, killed their children in front of them, killed them in front of their children, uh, just ma just killed them. And they enjoyed it. And so from that moment on, it was an official holiday. Every year after that, they had a Thanksgiving celebration. This was to celebrate not only the Peacoat Massacre, but the plague that killed most of the native peoples of that area. And it stayed this way for hundreds of years. That's what Thanksgiving is all about, the extermination genocide of the native peoples of North America. Now, it stayed this way until October 3rd, 1863. And I don't know if anybody knows what that date is, but that was the very first day that the uh, Thanksgiving was an official holiday. Abraham Lincoln signed a law into effect that, Octo that uh, in October 1863 that Thanksgiving would be an official celebration to celebrate the peace that exists between the native peoples and the United States because by then it was actually a country and it was the US now it wasn't just they didn't just call themselves the Europeans what's interesting about this is just a few months earlier in 1862 Abraham Lincoln had 38 Sioux ex executed in the largest mass execution in U.S. history. They were all paraded up onto a scaffold and hung for attempting to defend their homes. This was the largest execution in U.S. history to date and uh, in fact up until now it still stands as the largest execution, public execution in U.S. history. The bodies were uh, they did terrible things to the bodies. In fact, when it was all over with, they actually let medical schools experiment on them. But this is a uh, this is just only reason I'm telling you this is to show you the relationship between Abraham Lincoln and the native peoples. He had no problem just ordering mass executions of native peoples, and yet he at the same time made a holiday to celebrate the peace that existed between the Americans and the or the Americans and the U.S. citizens. But this isn't uh, the end of the story. It became a common practice at this time when any peoples, native peoples, wanted to negotiate with the U.S. government that they would bring their tribal elders to Washington, D.C. and let them meet with the Great Father, which is what they called Abraham Lincoln. He would present them with what's called peace medals, just a round disc with a pitch, his picture on one side and the other side would have uh, some kind of Native American symbolism. And he would tell these peoples whenever the U.S. Cavalry comes, you show them your peace uh, medals, and that will show that you are friends with the Great Father, and they will, they will be your friends as well. Of course, this was just a trick that the U.S. government used, because then these elders would go back to their tribes, and any time the cavalry would come in, they would run out, the whole village would run out with this peace medal, and they would show the cavalry, look, we are friends of the Great Father, at which time they were surrounded and executed. In fact, this was such a uh, such a useful tool that they began to use, make peace medals to present to any indigenous people that the United States was preparing to attack. Uh, this was done not just by the United States, but the entire Anglo-American Empire. Whenever the native people seemed to have more resources or enough resources to make it worth the the empire's time to go over there and kill them, they would present their elders with peace medals first to soften them up. The last time in history of any note when this was done was December 7th, 1941, when the United States government presented peace medals to uh, a couple of Japanese ambassadors. That was the date of Pearl Harbor. So sometimes the trick works and sometimes it don't. But in any case, this is the true history of Thanksgiving. 
And if you still believe that Thanksgiving is a holiday to celebrate you know, our thanks for the peace between the native peoples and the uh, European peoples, then answer this question. Why is the date when Europeans are, are celebrating Thanksgiving, why is that a day of mourning among the native peoples, many of which are still basically held in internment camps around the country? Oh well, if anybody from the Empire, maybe FEMA, comes up and offers you a peace medal, just remember, it doesn't always turn out well. If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. <laughs>